Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I will be your host today, another week joining you all on here. But this week, I am joined by Damie, aka Weird Creative. Hi, Damie. How are you doing today? We don't seem to have any audio on him. Hello, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Yes, I'm good. I'm fine. Doing very well. Good, good. I'm so excited yes. to have you here. You have some absolutely incredible work. If you haven't seen Damie's portfolio, be sure to check it out. Check out his Instagram. We're going to be creating some really amazing stuff. But in the meantime, welcome everyone. Welcome into the chat. Thank you all for being here. We have Cody Bear, of course, hosting the chat room here. And welcome General, Carol, Robert, all the usuals in here. So nice to see you all again. And please feel free to ask Damie questions. If you're watching us on YouTube, come over to Behance and join in on the chat. Damie, without any further ado, let's get started. I'd love to see some of your work in Photoshop and uh, hear about what we're going to be working on today. Yes, yeah, so uh, first of all, my name is Dami Adebayo, and uh, uh, designer, graphic designer, and visual artist based in New York. I've been doing this for like um, seven years, seven, eight years now. And um, basically most, I'm mostly in the entertainment industry and um, I've, I have a great time journey designing for uh, clients and small businesses. And, and I'm pretty happy to be here to design uh, and show some of my work. So some of my techniques and skills I've been using to uh, achieve my um, results, I guess. Yeah. So, um, let me see. I have to finish up. So, yeah. what do you have thing? planned for us today? Yeah. So, I have a, um, I'm trying to create um a little bit futuristic but like space type of vibe so um document and uh so the first thing i do is like create um um a new layer and uh i usually put in 300 dpi first like the standard size and um i found this really cool um astronaut picture Ooh, i love that on um i don't be stopped so yeah, so let's see. I'm, I'll, I use a pencil basically most of the part because there are several ways to like cut out in Photoshop. And uh, but for me, I like to use like the pencil because of gives more detail, I guess. So, <clears throat> so um, so and start cutting out point to point middle awesome always so good to work with the pen tool and get those precise edges Yes. What, 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 um, if I may ask you, cause you do design too, what, what tool do you use often when you try to cut out? Um, I usually tend to use, um, I use the pen tool. Sometimes I have like a bit of a, a love hate relationship with it. Um, <laughs> uh, just a second, going to increase my audio. Um, and then I also, uh, I use channels a lot to cut things out. Channel 
yeah, it kind of takes a little bit of time, but for me, I like I enjoy the process to so just um, cut out and. Yeah, I see someone in the chat also mentioned using channels too. It's really, really helpful when it comes to cutting something out that's on a white background like this. You could you could do that, but you seem really fast with a pen tool, so. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you like the background remover too, or the channels too, but um, because it really depends to me on what you're trying to work on, you know? Definitely. And the type of picture it is. Yeah, and I think Adobe's select subject is really good too. Um, I tend to use that yes, a lot. Yes, very good. That's I think great. What, yeah, I think it, it actually improved over the years, like while working with um, the selection tool. Works really yeah. great. Yeah, it's always so good when I'm like feeling lazy or on the go or something and yes. <laughs> like, okay, quick, I need to get this done. <laughs> exactly. So um, we, I see in the chat, people are wondering why you're not using the selection tool since it's on a white background, but it seems like you're used to using the pen tool and you're kind of, is that, is that right? Kind of going with what you feel good with? Um, I feel like we have enough time to use the pen tool. There's enough time for me to like, um, with the pen tool. Um, so, Yeah, it seems like you're really good with it. I definitely struggle a lot with <laughs> getting around the curves and stuff. Maybe you can talk a little bit about if you have any tips for um, how to get around, like you're, you're working around his fingers and his hands really seamlessly. If you have any tips of how to do that. So basically you're like, it depends on big like points. Like you just like make from point A to like point B and you're like, Trying to create a curve, curve around um, the points, you know. So is that just? It's really like that simple. It's point A to point B, then put a curve in the middle, and just like you know. Yeah. Yeah. People are saying you're very good with the pen tool. <laughs> the bro is chill with the pen tool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Let's hear from the chat. What tool do you guys use most often to cut things out? Seems like some of you have said a little bit um, that you use the pen tool, that you use channel selection, quick selection. Everyone vote. What is your favorite method? From, from flight, go on. Okay. Cody Bear, I agree with you. I'm terrible with the pen tool as well. <laughs> it almost seems like, Damien, it seems like you're kind of doing like shorter path clicks and uh, that seems to be helping and like very tiny and then kind of pulling it out. Yes, I mean, the picture of like layers on like cogs all over, so I have also like, you know, um, really precise. Uh, yeah. I wish just like time to like show different techniques to like, you know, cut out because there's so many ways to like cut out a picture, which is really amazing with Photoshop. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so many different ways. You know, like five or six ways. Yeah, probably even more than that. I think. More, yes. Like so many ways. Like it just depends on the one you, you like work with. And, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Faster options too. Like white backgrounds are like the easiest to like, you know, remove. Yeah. Yeah, I used to always use the eraser tool and cut things out that way, which was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, yeah. I feel like it wasn't even that long ago. Let us know in the chat. Did you ever use the eraser tool to cut something out? <laughs> almost, yeah, almost yeah. finished. So fast. I don't think so, but yeah. okay. Ryan says that he used the eraser back in CS3. Okay, cool. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all did it at one point. I, f I feel like yeah, there was definitely a time when, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it doesn't just time to like really like just, you know. Yeah. There was a time when layer masks were very confusing and I didn't understand like the difference between the black and white and I don't know, it's a lot to yeah. learn. <laughs> like, that was, yeah, exactly. There was a time like that. I was so yeah. confused, like, okay. And like the red took, there's a red uh, layer that comes up too. Uh, right, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, when that would come up, it's like, oh my God, what did I do? Exactly, yeah. Question for you from the chat. Are you working with a mouse or a tablet? Um, I work with a mouse because I've been using the mouse for a long time. So I just like, you know, I, I have a tablet right here, but I just want to use the mouse. Um, cool. Yeah, but me people too. work great. People work great. Yeah. I use the mouse too, and everyone always makes fun of me for it, but... Hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, that hand is definitely, you make it look so easy. You make the pen tool look like um, it might become all of our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it, 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 the pen is just an option to just cut out it's not like the i just just something i just use you know if i have yeah. like time on my hands to just put the thing around uh i feel like i feel like the pencil makes it look like you're doing something like you're like you know actually working or like you know but <laughs> yeah just cruising around it So while you're working on that, do you want to um, tell everyone a little bit about maybe how you got into Photoshop art and a little bit about your your journey? And do you do this full time for work? Yeah, it is full time. It is full time. Okay, cool. I I was in college when I like stumbled upon Photoshop. I was actually using like some other app. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention, but it was it wasn't the best part. So my friend was uh, in college. Was he asked Photoshop, and uh, I like uh, told him, "What was this? You know, what's what's this um, app? You know?" And he said, "Oh, it's Photoshop. Like, okay, it's the name like stuff." And that was like like 2015, 13 or something. So so I installed it, and since then I was just been playing around in college. And honestly, I was in back in Nigeria. I was in bad Nigerian college then. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, so ever since then, I just like playing a lot with like design and been uh, walking, doing school flies or like college design flies with friends and just, um, uh, yeah, I just got better. 
Yeah. Um, you know, and there's so many like content for designers and Photoshop that you can like learn from. Um, at that time, I used like PDF. They were like PDF content, like downloads, and like you have to like read like the uh, tutorials. So right. I basically started with PDFs, basically <laughs> PDFs. So wow, yeah, so. that's mm -hmm. awesome. And yeah. you've said you've been doing it for seven years. Seven, eight years. It's professionally, like seven, eight years, but like ten years now. Professional, like seven, eight years. Wow, so. that's so cool. Yeah. And a lot of your clients, are they, are you doing kind of like um, flyers or like uh, corporate type stuff and advertisements? Like, yeah, it's more like advertisement for like okay. um, uh, uh, entertainment industry, like uh, music artists, um, album covers, um, posters. Very cool. Yeah. I would say the material is basically like just content. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. that. What's a, what's your favorite thing that you've worked on for a, a campaign? Um, I think it was, um, Apple Bazaar magazine for, awesome. uh, Maluma. Wow. It was a really cool project. Yeah, that's so cool. Did they reach out to you or how did you get that job? Um, it was through a friend. Um, it was through a friend. He just reached out to me like, oh, this is cool. Like, um, gig, would you like to like um, jump on it? And he's a photographer basically. So he, he shot the pictures and everything and gave me like the direction. And like, um, I'll, we discussed how we should take the pictures, the lighting and all that stuff so we could transform you transfer it to like photoshop um wow. the lightning can blend with the background and um, yeah that's so, an awesome gig yeah so that was really cool and it was like the front page i like well we had like four five or six pictures of the magazine um, wow yeah that would that's be really like cool. a dream yeah, that was really cool. That was my first magazine. Like, okay, wow. I, I wasn't expecting to like have my work on a magazine, a major yeah. magazine. Yeah, so. that is huge. Yep, yeah, we're done. Awesome. Yeah. So the next step I take after like um, all the pins are like together, I uh, still pick the pencil, the pencil and just right click, make a selection. And uh, the feather radius for me is 0 0.5. I don't know if it's for everybody else, but for me it's like 0 0.5. So I click okay. And I click okay, I uh, And I click the um, selection tool. Selection tool, then select and mask. Basically, this is just like to clean up some parts that, you know, are off, you know. The refined edge brush tool just does that. It just like, you know, makes the edges much better. helps a lot and I just like new new layer and name and layer mask the output I press OK right here there's like a unfinished section and if you see it so for some so for something like this I just use like the background removal tool basically razor tool magic razor tool basically so if I click this it just disappears like you know so that's it. And uh, I take this and drop it in a new layer. Let's 
So, so we change this to black background. Can everyone hear me very well? What's that? Can everyone hear me very well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, let's work with the black background. So. Yeah. Take this and. Uh, great. So, Cody asks, where do you get your stock images from? I know you mentioned this one's Adobe stock, right? Yeah, this is from Adobe stuff. But okay. um, I have a subscription with uh, we got a Shutterstock, and okay. and sometimes I just like it just depends on the kind of picture I'm looking for. And there's so many like um, resources out there too that you can find great stock photos. Yeah. Yeah, you can ask like photographers or friends like you know they have like pictures you can, you can use to like, create. And most of them will be like, they'll be really like happy to like help you out and send you some pictures. So true. Yeah, I always think that that's such a great way to work with new images. If you're feeling like a little bit bored of what you have and just reach out to friends. And I used to always like post in my story and be like, hey, anyone have some cool images I can play with for my next edit or any ideas? And people always love that. Mm -hmm. So let's create like some portal, some um, so. Go shape. Strong shape. Shape of this and put it behind it. And this is going to be cool. On this, um, we call Galactic. Uh, Space type that. picture. Yeah, take and drag it. In. So I'm, I'm going to like clip this picture inside the shape I just created using the, um, the pencil. And so I'm just going to right click and create clipping mask inside. So mm -hmm. give us this like uh, so. The picture is inside the square rectangular um, shape right now. And, um, that looks really cool already. So we can adjust the... A question for you from Angel. Uh, does he plan his drawings or does he just go with the flow? Um, so I just, sometimes I just have an idea in my head, like, okay, this is the concept. This is, I just design. I look for like the pictures or what backgrounds I need and just put them together. Mm. I, um, sometimes maybe I draw, but once I have like a, a, a very like um, small idea of what I'm trying to do, I just, I just go, just uh, try to start looking for pictures or backgrounds and content to just create yeah awesome uh, so let's make this much more uh look uh so double click i just double clicked on the um uh, the, the shape and we can add like uh outer glow
I love that glow. So cool. Blue tone. I use a brush a lot. Okay. What do you say? I was just going to ask uh, if you're adding some glow with the brush, but you're about yes, to Yes, I, I, I use brush um, to like create like a shadow or glow most of the time. And uh, I just like pick color and just paint around the edges. Yeah, looking good. And um, increase the brush and take it deeper through. Just use Question the blending for options. You. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, question for you from the chat. Uh, what is the most important thing in your compositing? Um, I think is uh, the, edge, the the cutout is very important to me. I don't like I like the cutout to be very clean, a clean cutout, and also like um, the the blending options, like the the balance between the, the um the balance between each element i like them being like synonymous to each other like really um yeah i think those two are very really, really important in like composite i love that so yeah. true i think balance is definitely very important because i think you can easily lose that in an image yeah mm -hmm. So is this a image that you are creating now um, from scratch or something that you've made before? This picture? This yeah. image? Um, no. Um, I've made something similar, but not with this picture. Um, yeah, I mean, the concept like this is not like the newest concept. It's like, you know, astronaut, like, you know, galactic concepts, so. Right. These are like, um, I would say it's a basic, like, you know, uh, graphic design concepts, you know, space, spaceman in space, some futuristic stuff. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. I love all things space. Yeah. Always I think, I think, I think, um, Working with space stuff and futuristic stuff is, is like never is is, is is always cool. It doesn't stop like being cool. So I agree. Yeah, I feel like people are have kind of been saying lately that astronauts are getting like annoying and overplayed. But I think I think it's just that people get sick of seeing the same type of design but i don't feel like yeah. astronauts could ever get old i think it just it people just need mm -hmm. to put a new spin on it you know yeah mm -hmm. see if we can find uh... let's try this um also, it's from Adobe Stock. Let's see how this works. Let's see. I love that background. Oops. 
So I'm just making adjustments to, this, to, the, um, to the sizes of um, Cody asked, what is your favorite subject to composite? Um, I, I like futurism. I like futuristic stuff, you know? I like futuristic stuff. I think that you can always have fun with futuristic, futurism anytime. Like, there's so many content in futurism you can play with. And, um, yeah, I like futurism a lot. Cool. And, um, I agree. Yeah, I've been really wanting to play with like a futuristic city and start to kind of experiment with that, but I've been struggling to find the perfect city on Adobe stock. I've been searching for so long and I cannot find the futuristic city that I'm looking for. So I need to get into like 3D or something and make it myself. <laughs> I just use like Tokyo or something or just like That's New a York, good idea. Or just, you know, but uh, for, more, for like more advanced, like futuristic, I think most people just use like 3D to like create like a, which is like really like on an advanced level, I guess, to create like a city, a futuristic city from scratch, you know? Yeah. Apart from that, like, apart from that, like Tokyo or some um, New York can really work for a futuristic background. Yeah, Tokyo is a really good idea. I, um, I didn't even actually think of that. I've been mostly looking at like New York. And so that's, that's smart. Cause I know so many people make them in 3d and I was like, well, I kind of want to use a photo. <laughs> Cody right. asked what my favorite subject to composite is. I think you know that Cody <laughs> space girl. <laughs> I'm obsessed with all things outer space. So the edit you're working on today is right up my alley. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. So let's try and work with some color um, balance. And um, honestly, I really don't, the thing about color balance for me is just having fun and seeing how, you know, and just stopping when it's right, just like stop, you know? So I just like play around with like the colors and like just uh, okay, okay, and keep this to the astronaut. lights you know just like like this are you using overlay or soft light i saw you uh changing the blending mode um it depends because for something like this is is like more like glowy type um light so i just from Anything from color dodge to over overlay and soft light, but for this one I'll be using I'll be using overlay. Um, to I think overlay is like the basic glow lights. And then yeah, that looks I Just good. like mask it out. And just erase the parts I don't need. Mm -hmm. 
So tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Are you kind of building up the um, layers of the color or erasing it? Walk us through a little bit here. Oh, so when I like, I, I use the brush sometimes, most of the time to like um, create a shadow or like light. So, so when I create the paint, I just like paint. So like, for example, just paint like this, paint like this. Let's say, let's say I paint like this. I just like mask it, okay. and I just um, I make sure the background is black, so I can just like remove the things I don't need, you know. And this basic mask uh, tool to just clean out and. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes like really like rigid and rough, but it does a job for me, you know. So cool. And it looks like you're using um a low opacity on your brush. Yes, I I adjust that too, like opacity. I adjust that to the preferred you know, one that works. It's always different, which always different, depends on now. You know, you want the light to glow or reflect, so. Cool. Yeah, yeah. it's looking really great. I love the kind of the intensity of the glow coming out right near the bottom of his foot. Yeah, you can add more glow to the, um, to the um, portal to see if, uh, you know, shape. Mm -hmm. Increase the intensity. See? The blend mode, you could try the blend mode too and see what blend mode works best. And yeah, this is really like cool. Use this too. Some auto glow. Oh, yeah. Let me try this. Um, I'm trying to see if I can duplicate this to see how that looks. The portal, see how it will duplicate and just um, let's make it double, I guess. See how that looks. Ooh, that's cool. So trippy. Yeah. It's more like a mirror. It looks like a mirror, I guess. I'm not sure, but it looks like a mirror then. Cool mirror, mirror. Mm, so. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's almost like it's giving it like a hologram effect or something. Yeah. Kind of like planets do. You see, um, you see, I can add like more. Uh -oh. Um, we seem to be having a technical difficulty. Paco, are you? All right, everyone, technical difficulty. We will be back in a few minutes here. Just got to sort some.
All right, we are back. Sorry about that, everyone. We are now smooth sailing. Yes, yeah, so. Let me see if we can find like some planets and planet and more. All right, we are back. Sorry about that, everyone. We are now smooth sailing. Yes, so, all good. Let me see if we can find like some planets and planet and more. All right, we are back. Sorry about that, everyone. We are now a smooth sailing. Yes, so, all good. Is everything good? Yeah, that's looking great. We're having a bit of audio issues, so we're just trying to sort that out, but keep on working. It's looking really good. Okay. All right, we are back. Sorry about that, everyone. We are now on smooth sailing. Let's see how this works. So, um, Gal Galaxy, I guess. Everything good? Yeah, that's looking great. We're having a bit of audio issues, so we're just trying to sort that out, but keep on working. It's looking really good. Okay. see how this works so, all right on. uh Damie, everyone in the chat we're gonna go on standby for a few minutes to fix these audio issues so yeah, sorry really for the no delay problem. and we'll be right back All right, we are back. Woo! Hopefully we got that sorted out. Thank you everyone for your patience. And let's on, let's keep on going. <laughs> yes. So um, let's add some uh, more galactic uh, vibe to it. And I just added this background. Everyone was saying that our stream got sucked into the portal. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like, yes. Yeah, so the blending options, just play with it and see. And, uh, Mask. And 
just raise um, Just masking that out. Yeah, masking it out. And reduce the opacity. I just want some like really like faint uh, blend to it. Not really like uh, too obvious, I guess. Yeah. Hi, Steve and Leah. Welcome to the chat. Leah, always nice to see you here. Let me see if we can put this uh, second photo at the back. Let me see. This one is better. Let me see. Okay. I think it's fine this way. I think it's, it looks good. Let's add more. Let me add more lights to the astronauts to make it look. Uh, so what I do is take a brush, take a brush, and uh, keep the lightest blue I can find, and paint. Paint new layer. Just, oh, so. Ooh, yeah. Zoom in and see so you guys can see better. Yeah, super cool to add a little bit of the glow. Brush it out. Cody asked, uh, what size document do you usually work in? I think you mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, but maybe people missed it. Um, I used 100 DPI and 1500, 1500, 1500 DPI for every project. Like, I don't care if it's like Instagram or just, it's always 300 DPI for me. I just... Cool. I work. I recommend everyone to use like twenty DPI. You could use like one twenty five too, and yeah, one twenty five, three hundred DPI. Those two works fine for like yeah for any work you're doing. Um, but most times twenty DPI is for like big prints, like billboards or like you know. But or you don't know where your work can go. You know, someone can take your work and want to like put it in Times Square, I guess. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so it might come in handy to have an internal DPI, you know, so. Yeah, that's so true. I, I know a lot of times we tend to work really small because we're thinking of our canvas and our audience being on Instagram, but forgetting that if someone may see this piece and want to blow it up either for their wall or like Times Square, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. always important to work bigger. Yeah. Then you get all that nice resolution too. No one likes working on a pixelated screen. Yeah. It helps, it helps, it helps you like, you know, see what you're doing better. Yeah. So just take so a brush. Another, yeah, go on. Another question um, from Cody as you're working along here. Uh, what are some of your favorite hobbies aside from compositing? 
Um, I have a bike. I bike, you know. Cool. Bike, and I uh, take pictures, travel, and uh, for one weird reason, I just started watching boxing lately. But I don't know. But I think boxing is cool. Yeah. I think it's because I have like there's some couple of uh, boxers I like. Like so, sometimes I watch it. It's fun, and I think it's, I think also because of uh, Jake Paul and the Paul brothers <laughs> now boxing. Maybe I'm just like into it now. But yeah, so do you yeah. like them? Um, I think it's just entertaining. Has their beef with them, right? I think <laughs> I don't like I don't like them, but I think it's just entertaining. I just. Honestly, I just want someone to just beat them up, like just you know, knock them down, you know. But I feel you on that. <laughs> unfortunately, they're they're like you know they're they're doing pretty well, you know they're pretty good. I don't know, oh, but they're doing pretty well for themselves. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But most of the time, I just design. And, um... I just design and. Social media, I guess. Social media too. Just look at funny videos or creative work. You know, look at other people's work and see how like you know your pages. Is it gonna be a good place place to like see people's work and you know not to compare yourself to your work, but just to appreciate your work and like you know your style and see how you can like you know improve. I guess you know. So definitely. Yeah, so I'm always on the lookout for uh, ideas, new creative ideas and style, and um, yeah, comes in handy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I I totally feel you. I definitely spend a lot of time on social media looking for ideas. I I could probably spend more time creating and less time uh, looking yes, around like, for ideas. But I, I, tell, I tell people like. Design is just like maybe 20, 30 percent. Like the main 60 percent is like research. Yes, yeah, re- totally. Constantly like trying to find content and you know thinking, but if I post this, will it look good? Will it work fine? You know, because most creators we have like four, five, seven, sometimes ten ideas in a day to just. But out of the ten, some might be too hard, or might be too difficult to do, or might too you know. So you just like figure out. Okay, what pictures I can find out works, or what images works with the best idea I have in mind, you know, and absolutely go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I find myself seeing all these cool ideas and being like, oh, I could do something with this, and like an astronaut and space, and here and here and here. And then I start working on it. And I'm like, I'm so lazy. Why am I even wasting my time working on this? I'm like, it's a great yeah. idea in my head, but I'm not gonna create it. Exactly. It's a daily yes. struggle, right? Daily struggle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's see. Matt asked, um, what do you find to be the most useful shortcut keys, the ones that you just use nonstop because they speed up your editing? Um there is a there's a lot, there's a lot of shortcut keys. Wow. Um I'll say Control Z or you know Control to go back. I guess undo, undo, undo is like the most useful. But <laughs> yep. works like you know, I just it takes me like a microsecond to just click it. I guess so. And um, I also use it just tool. This um shortcut too, but not every time. It's Control um, Shift Control Alt E. It's just like a, it just makes let me, let, me, let me show you right now shift control or e um, and it just duplicates yeah. new the old layer and i use this i use this only if i want to like um add some extra like stuff to it like um texture or something um, okay. i don't want it to affect all my design but well, most times like the last thing i do if i want to like add anything extra noise texture um yeah 
Let me fire. It's a really good uh, shortcut. Shift Control Alt E. Yeah. Um, PC and yeah, Windows. Yeah. Yeah, I love using that. Like right before I do uh, camera raw at the end, I always do the the stamp on the layer. I think like the coolest to me, like the coolest like key is is a is kind of long, but is Shift Control Alt E. Sounds like a cheat code or something, you know? But, yeah, yeah, it really does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should just all talk in sh uh, Photoshop shortcuts all day long. Control. Honestly, I'm not, the I'm not the best in shortcut, but <laughs> I know like five or six, I know it works fine for me and I'm good. But I know some people that, you know, they have like lots of like shortcuts. And the, but for me, I just work with the best shortcut I can, I can work with, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And I think that's what you should focus on. You shouldn't like trying to know like all the shortcuts, and, you know, but the one that works best for you, you should, you should know. Right. Yeah, I feel like it's easy to get bogged down in worrying about what the shortcuts are and then mm -hmm. not actually yeah. like working and stuff. And so let us know in the chat, are you a shortcut person or do you like using the long road, taking the long path around Photoshop? So walk us through a little bit about what you're doing now. Are you still working on the stars? Um, I think I'm done with the stars right now. Just, okay. um, I mean, this, I can add more planets too. Let me see if we can add more planets. Let me see if I'm allowed to like show because I don't be stuck. Am I allowed to share this Adobe stock screen? Can I? Uh, yeah. Does it come up or? Um, let me see. Are you on Adobe stock right now? Yes. Okay. We're still seeing your. And show it. Oh. Okay. So many cool plants, you know. Let's take this. No. Looks like we got a mix of shortcuts and long cuts. <laughs> long road people in the chat. Uh, Bliss, I see you say uh, that you're gonna tape the shortcuts to the wall. Have any of you seen the um, keyboard cover for your keyboard that has all of the Photoshop shortcuts on it? I think you can get it on Amazon. I don't know. I'm sure Adobe sells it too. Yeah. I think that's super cool when you're first learning. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I've seen something like that before. Yeah. Such a game changer. Yeah, it really is really is. But hey, I've been using Photoshop for uh, 20 years, maybe like since the since it first wow. came out. And uh, wow. I still don't know all the shortcuts. I like the long road. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you're some type of, I don't know, some type of super geek. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I think you have like to like just study it. You don't have to know it because it's a lot, it's a lot of shortcuts. If you want to like, it's a lot. A lot of shortcuts, but totally. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to. So we have this red planet. I don't know what planet is this. Seems like it's um, Mars, but um, yeah. So because the Mars is the color is weighed like you know it doesn't go with the general picture itself. So. I would have to find a way to like make it blend in its own way. So one of the things I would do is basically um, create a new 
create clipper color bands to it. Um, color bands. I clip it inside the planet. And just, um, I mean, it's still red, but just a little bit blue. So it fits mm -hmm. in. And can I film this one? Let's see. From the shadows. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. Then we can just like add um, new layer and use opacity, just, just add more lights, you know, see how it works. And Just reduce the passing a little bit. Mm. Honestly, just basically having fun with Photoshop is just, I mean, um, I, um, I don't really know the precise settings for color bands or like, so I just like fit it around and you know, what comes out best. Yeah, I think that's really the best thing you can do. I mean, I don't think there's really like a precise mm -hmm. color balance per se. And actually last week um, we had uh, Eric Almas on and he was talking about how you can get like this perfectly neutral color balance that's correct mm. per se, but it's not creative, you know? And so I think what you're doing by just testing it is more creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, let's, see, uh, let's see if we can add some mech, Ooh. some abstract, uh, I think this is like a tank or something, I don't know, it looks cool. Yeah, so for a picture like this, I just took like the eraser, like the uh, the background, magic eraser tool, and just like uh, and do it again. Just click and just you know, it's like one of the easiest ways to like remove the white background. So. And so, is there a reason you did didn't use that on the astronaut, but you used it on this, or do you just kind of mix and match the way you? Um. I think it's because the astronaut is like the main focus of the subject itself. So if you're working on a project with like different elements, you know, you can use the quick um, eraser tool or uh, channel tool to like just remove those backgrounds because sometimes those other elements have like white backgrounds. If you're like um, using like a PNG or something or just white, basic white background. So it makes it much faster. But the the focus, this the main focus of the subject. I like to like use the pencil okay. to just um, work on that. Interesting. Yeah. Like that. Um, you don't have. Yeah. Question for like, Carol: Is this little uh, charger thing from Adobe mm -hmm. Stock as well? Uh, no, but I think this this is a, <laughs> this, this should be a similar one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Should be a single one. Yeah. We revealed the secret. <laughs> so I mean this 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 for something like this is uh honestly I have like pictures I just like find, you know, and download from Shutterstock some sort of time and just search, search, you know. I just save it, you know, 
and uh, yeah. But the bag, this cool background is from Adobe Star. Yeah. Cool. So for something like this, let's see how we can blend this inside um, this picture to make it look more realistic, I guess, you know? So. Gotta let's love make a shot of New York behind you. New York? Yeah, yes, yeah, New York, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. So I'm gonna create a shadow right now. Create a shadow. Some people like to like make a shape and blow the shot, uh, blow the shape to create a shadow. That's a that's another option to like create shadows if you know how to. But uh, for me, I just like paint and paint. Let's see. Let me deal with the opacity. Paint, paint, paint. Carol is wondering what you searched to find the charger thing. <laughs> wow. Um, I think the charger falls on the Mech, M E C H, on the any um, futuristic, futuristic Mech. You can find stuff like this, like drones or chargers, and like, uh, yeah, they're Futuristic called mech. mech. Yeah, they're like all mechanical, like objects, like mech, call it mech, M E C, M E C H, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we shadow, click. So it looks like you added another layer and now you're kind of doing the darker part of the shadow. Yeah, so I, I added a new layer and I clipped it inside the mech, the, the object, just to make the base much more dark and kind of adjust that too, to make it look more um, realistic. And I'm gonna add like color balance for this so you can like also blend to it and I can give it a blue tone to it. Um, oh yeah, that helps. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how you kind of um, build these shadows and the light patches like very extreme and then kind of tone them down and refine them. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that you do often? Yes, I do. I do that because you don't really know, like, I, I, I'm already sure about the uh, how strong the shadow should be, you know? Mm. I know. So playing with the shadow, like opacity and just like fiddling with it, like, you know, okay, it looks perfect, it's good, not too dark, not too light, you know, and, um, yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to, like, clip new layer and clip it inside and just paint. 
Administration Union. New layer, New, like a big, a big um, glow, paint glow. Mm. You can see like the yeah. the paint isn't shown outside because it's clipped inside. So when I press the brush, it only shows inside the the mat. You know, that's because it's clipped inside. So do that and just mask it and. Goes a little bit. Let's let's try levels. Do you use levels sometimes? I actually don't use levels too often, but I'm curious to see what you do here. I, I find myself using curves the most. Yeah, I think they're probably like the same, you know. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Oh so yeah. Mm -hmm. it just gives it that. Mm -hmm. It'll be an adjustment. That definitely helps. Yeah. Okay. Add more sh shadow detail. Using the brush tool. Just paint. Oh. Okay. Just paint a little bit. I love how the shadow and the glow like really anchor it into the space and give it like a atmosphere. Yeah. What do you all think in the chat? You guys liking this? I think it's looking pretty cool. So you can always plan a little bit. I honestly don't know the difference between like opacity and fill, but I know it's probably very similar. But um, I just use both anyway. I use both. In... Yeah, I, t I believe um, that fill. I think keeps the luminosity. Um, oh, correct, mm. correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, uh, the difference between opacity and fill under the layers panel. Um, I'm trying to remember, cause usually, so I use opacity most often, like exactly how you're using it, but then I'll use fill when I have um, like glow and stuff. Mm. I don't use both. I, 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 I'm not sure if I see like a difference, but you say so. I, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, like we were saying, there's a million different ways to do similar things in Photoshop. So, and whether you're a designer or like a package creator or a Photoshop, uh, or I guess I could, should say a composite, an image compositor. I always just say Photoshop artist for the world that doesn't know <laughs> compositing, you know? Um, or a photographer, like the same tools will kind of give you a different result. Thank you for sharing the orange barrel thing, uh, Leah. That's we found the exact one that you're using on Adobe stock. Oh, you should have found it. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely yeah, gonna have to play with that. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, you know, 
futuristic stuff. You know, yeah. You can still work on the shadows too, you know? Another way to like yeah. add shadows is, um, other technique I use is basically um, taking this object and um, duplicating it. Okay, let me, let me see if I can do that. Um, duplicate. <clears throat> so uh, Leah said, when you use blend mode, there are some which are extreme. And if you use fill, then it reduces the blend effect, whereas the opacity would reduce the layer opacity. I appreciate it. I mean, yeah. I didn't even know that. That's like really I mean, helpful to know that you can actually control the amount of um, blending mode that you're using. Yeah. I think there was something to it, but I wasn't like, I didn't even know what the, I know there was like some kind of difference, but I wasn't like really like, you know, I can pin pin down what it is now. So yeah, so you know, I'm always that. learning something new. Every time, every time. Because <laughs> um, the knowledge one artist knows is sometimes can be very different from the knowledge you know artist B knows. You know, so definitely. So let, let me let me turn off the shadow and, and use a duplicate of this, which is this one. And so to create shadow, the second option I use to create shadows is basically just making the second option plain bl black, you know, plain black. And one of the ways I just do this is just levels. I just go to levels and just make it black all the way, all the way black, you know. And then this is much more, I won't say complex, but then I just transform using the pencil. Sorry, the selection tool. I place it under the original and just, um, just do this you now. Also, it depends on where the light is coming from. If the light is coming from this way, the shadow falls this way, you know? So that's also important, important to like notice. So this gives you like a detail to the shadows too. Mm. If you don't want to like use a brush and just paint, you can use this technique too. And uh, I go to filter, blow, Gaussian blow. Just uh, just blow. No. Yeah, you can just one no way to do it too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you can just leave it this way. Yeah, so I see you can find like some. Butterfly or something, I don't know. Some glow butterfly. Yeah. Always <laughs> love a good glow butterfly. Yeah. And sometimes keywords help. Like knowing the right keywords can help you find some really great pictures. So um, if you can 
you're very vast in like vo vocabulary and like words or like, you know, you can really find some really cool pictures that during your research and find some like the Mac stuff. Sometimes you don't type Mac, you won't find, you won't find it, honestly, you know? So I'll spend some little bit of fun. There's one right here. Let me see if I can find. Let's try this. Those are cool. So because this is in the background, black background already, probably just have to just um, use a blending option, you know, instead of trying to cut the butterfly, you can just um, options blending option screen and erase this grass away there's a grass away Brush and wipe it out. Yeah, so cool. So I wonder now if you go to fill, if that would um, decrease the amount of screen effect. Fill, you try. Hmm. You mean this? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's only for like other other blend modes i'll have to play around with that sometime mm, i think so i think it depends on the blend mode yeah and um let's see how i can make this much more glowy i guess you know and i will uh, go to image adjustment levels and just it's Cody said, fun fact, the bits and bobs of lots of detail in sci-fi backgrounds is called Greeble if you're ever trying to search for it. I did not know that. <laughs> Greeble. That is, that's so helpful. Cody, let us know if you know of any other things like that because you know me, being in love with space stuff, I can always use the correct names of things. <laughs> yeah. Mm 
Let's see how this looks. I mean, the butterfly just like some, just something extra, you know? Just yeah. make it like unreal, surreal, I guess. And let's me flip it, transform. So I'm trying to separate this butterfly from the rest. So I'm using the selection tool to uh, select it. And like this, convert to smart objects, convert to smart objects, and rasterize layer, and just cut it out like this. Let's place this somewhere else. Right here. Two D. Two different ways. Mask. So where's this one? I'm trying to create a random butterfly, you know, it's just random. Cool. Butterflies be same. It's funny how like for some reason space and butterflies always go together and it just kind of become this like random thing that has happened and so many artists have done it like I've done it multiple times and I'm like where did this idea come from? <laughs> I, I think it's just like maybe um, I mean because maybe because butterfly they float so like you know anything that floats just and they look like they look like aliens too like some type of outside creatures you know so i and it can glow and all that stuff you can make it glow so i think it's a really cool concept to add to your like your work you know yeah so yeah i love it and um yeah can you see we can add like some glow to it how to go. Do you use brush sometimes? Like brush effects and stuff? Yeah. Okay. I don't use brush effects because I, I, I use, I usually use it when I started, but I don't anymore. Maybe, maybe someday I will. Yeah, always new things to learn. And glow effect. Size. Um, I'm really very tiny, but let me, let me see if I can freeze it. The bottom. Cut 
copy the star, paste the star, and just um, Yeah, great little pro tip right there to save some time. Yeah. And uh, let's see. But this is more, uh, more detail. Next brush. much hardness. <laughs> <laughs> so. Angel is very impressed with what you've done. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's looking really, really good. And for, um, I've seen a bunch of you in the chat come in and out and any of you that um, have had to leave or missed the beginning, be sure to check out the replay of this, which will be available a little bit uh, after we're finished. And then also Eric is back, or sorry, <laughs> Damie. <laughs> I'm like going from last week. Um, Damie is back tomorrow again at the same time. And uh, we'll be working on what, something else? Or do you have any plans for tomorrow? Yeah, definitely something else. Um, okay, something cool. Else, but, yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. So be sure to join us tomorrow too. The shadow is definitely looking perfection. Yeah, it takes, it takes a while to like really like, you know, make you look a little um, realistic. Mm -hmm. Brush. And what are you adding now? Um, I'm adding white to it, you okay. know, because the the closer to the light is, you know, the more you know bright it is. So cool. It's just to make it look, I don't know. Yeah. 
little rim light always helps so much. Yeah. I mean, the difference isn't much, but it's just to make it just something to add to it, you know? You can add more light to the portal, more glow, you know? General glow, I like to just take a faint blue, same blue, and just boom. This. Check the blending options, let's see. Let's, let's use, um, let's try overlay. A soft light. Cool. I think overlay works better. So overlay. Yes, I guess this, uh, more time do I have left? Do I have left? <laughs> uh, you have a little, uh, about 20 minutes left, a little less. Okay. Let, let's see if we can add one more, um, maybe, uh, a space, um, Rocket or something. Let's see what I can find. So yeah, can let's see what else we can add. Let us know in the chat what Damien should be yeah. adding to this piece. Exactly. What, what do you think I can add to it to make it? Yeah. Look like it? Such a... Carol said a lens flare. Let's see. Robert said a cat. <laughs> cat. Okay, that's possible. Like um, oh, with the uh, what's it called? The bubble, the bubble um, mask. Oh yeah, that would be super cute. Yeah, let's let's look for a float floating coat. Float. Okay. cat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, Robert, okay. you got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Peter said a robot or an alien. Long said UFO. Lots of good options here. Yeah, I think it. Cat is much more like unique, like it's, it's, it's weird, you know, so let's, let's pick one. I love let's the center to... one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's cut this out real quick. Um, 
sorry. The pen tool, but faster this time, I guess. <laughs> so I just like, there's one way to do it too. We just go around it and make selection 0 0.5. Mask and just do this. Wow, look at that. Practically flawless. Yeah, there's one way to like, you know, I'd do something like this if there's like lots of hairs around it and just like retain it here. So <laughs> Leah said the poor cat probably got flung in the air just for these images. <laughs> I know, so sad. Right. I just want to cuddle this little guy. Yeah, it looks very fluffy and stuff. <laughs> I love cats. Uh, I'm like, you know, I don't know. Depends. I, I think I like kittens, kittens than cats, like cats themselves, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, you know, they could take him or leave him. But my cat is very much like a dog. So she's like made me fall in love with cats. <laughs> Leah said, I think you mean Paulus masking. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm really good with Tams, like Photoshop Tam, but I. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can place this cat. Yeah. And let me find a... Let's find the um, space bubble. Space mask. I'm curious to see like if you can find this because I've struggled with this a lot. I ended up having to use a fish bowl. Yes, a fish bowl to walk through fine. Let's see, let me see if I can still find it, but I can't find how to use a fish bowl. Yeah, fish bowl works perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's what I did the last time I did an edit like that because I couldn't find a bubble helmet anywhere. Yeah, I think you can find you can actually find it. You know, I've seen a couple of. Um, yeah, you can find it. Google, I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Um. Looking for a fish bowl that doesn't have like, cause fish bowl is very tricky to like, you know. Yeah, I very... think um, it looked like you may have passed a PNG. Um, right, where did I see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one there, and then scroll down. PNG. Oh. Um, there's a PNG right there. Yeah, this, this, this works. Open as vector. Oh. This object looks like PNG. Oh. 
Oh yeah, so it still came in with the background. Yeah. So Sometimes it's weird. Mm-hmm. You have to open it as a vector and then put it in Illustrator yeah. and get rid of it. But um, I'll figure it out. I just I mean, it doesn't also like be perfect, but let, let me let me just download regular white background for it. Let's see, let's see how that works. I'll just see regular white background. Cool. Yeah, then you might be able to set it into like multiply mode mm-hmm. and then kind of blend it in a little. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Blend that. Um... We only have a little less than 10 minutes left. So we'll just play around with this and see what happens. Um, let's cut this real quick. Man, you're a master with pen tool. <laughs> you really make it look easy. Well. <laughs> I think it's easy. You just have to like, you know. Probably if I used it more often, maybe it would be easier. <laughs> yeah, you should. Still need to blend the cat too. I'm trying to blend the cat. It's not like the perfect fishbowl, but because of time, you just have to like use this now. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so some light. Okay. Yeah, the, the fish ball isn't uh, really working. We just use it for now. Little trick too. I don't know if that. Would... Oh, can you soft light? Definitely working, and then you could paint a little shine on it. Oh, like some reflection and stuff. Yeah, it's gonna take like some little bit of time to like make it look, but. Um... So the fishbowl itself is, is is blended, right? So to create some type of reflection. Yeah, it's a little it. tough. Mm-hmm. Running out of time, always out of time. Don't forget, everyone, to come back tomorrow for part two of this. We're going to be working on something completely different. And after this stream, stick around for the Photoshop Daily, or sorry, the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia, followed by the packaging design video with Tanya. Those are coming up next. So if you have your afternoon free, those are some fun things to do and to keep learning. And then we'll be back at 9 30 pacific time tomorrow do you know what the theme is that you're going to be working on tomorrow can you give everyone a little preview or are you going to just do it spur of the moment um, i'm going to go with something more much more uh, honestly i'm not sure it's the life show i guess uh, i'm not really sure but, I'm, but something more different you know cool. not too much lighting not too much uh, glow you know 
I'm not glow up. I don't know, it depends on how. Yeah, but something different. Definitely. Yeah. Robert says, it looks like the astronaut's trying to grab the cat. Maybe he's <laughs> saving him from the portal that he's fallen through. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you can keep going basically. And you know, the more detail you can keep going and when you feel like comfortable to stop, you can like stop, you know, but yeah, there's so many like, uh, different touches you can add to it on, um, when working in Photoshop. Awesome. When you feel like, when you feel comfortable to stop, that's the best time to stop, you know? So. Totally. I feel like that's the hardest time to know when to stop yeah, like, because you can always stop. add something else. And then you look away for a little bit, go to the bathroom, get some food, you come back and you're like, oh my God, I forgot mm -hmm. all this stuff that I need to do. You completely miss something. Yeah. And something I try to like check on my phone too, because sometimes the colors are different. It, it can, you know, it can change. Definitely. Before I post it or like before I like share, I just make sure it, it looks like the way I want it to look, you know, on mobile, on phone or tablet or tablet or whatever device you're trying to post it to. So. Yeah, that's such a great tip. I feel like it always looks mm -hmm. different, especially if you're working on like a retina display screen and yeah. so you got to kind of compare that. Yeah. But. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you everyone in the chat, Leah, Robert, Cody Bear. Thank you all for being here with us. It was such a pleasure. Thank you, Damie. We'll be back tomorrow at 930 Pacific time and we will see you then. Bye everyone.